So in this session, we're going to talk about dimensional analysis, which as an engineer is essentially just a way of checking the sanity of the method that you've used. So we're going to kick off, we're going to do three examples, and we're going to kick off with one using some equations that you should be familiar with, so the SUVAT equations. In this case, we're going to relate the displacement, S, equals UT, so that's the initial velocity times time, plus a half AT squared, so that's acceleration times time squared. If, let's say, under exam conditions you're a bit stressed, maybe you've forgotten. Should this be a T squared or a V squared? So one quick way and a very effective way of working that out is to look at the units of every term, because the units have to be the same on both sides of the equation. So displacement, well, that's going to be in meters, equals a velocity, meters per second, times time, that's seconds. And then acceleration is going to be a meters per second squared type of thing. And time is seconds squared. So now we flick through each of the units and we say, OK, are they the same in every part of the equation? We've got meters on one side, and we've got meters per second times seconds. Well, those cancel. That's fine. We're back to meters. And we've got meters per second squared times seconds squared. We're all good. OK, so if you've got that equation, you can be reasonably confident that you've got it the right way around and you've put the correct T instead of a V. OK, so the next example is going to be on the case of an equation where you know all the terms except one. So you know the units of all the terms except one. And someone's maybe they've asked you to go and find out this unit, go and Google it. You'd better give them a, a number with the right units, otherwise you're going to look ridiculous. So let's take as an example the diffusion equation, OK? The diffusion of heat. So we'll look at the first derivative of temperature with respect to time equals some coefficient times the second derivative of temperature with respect to space. OK, so we just go through all the units and see, therefore, what alpha must be to make this equation make sense. So this is going to be Kelvin per second. And we'll leave a little question mark in a box for alpha. And this one's going to be Kelvin per meter squared. OK, don't fall into the trap of thinking that it's Kelvin squared per meter squared for a second derivative. It's not. Kelvin for per meter squared. So what, therefore, must the units of alpha be in order for this equation to make sense? Well, we want to have this thing resemble this once it's multiplied by this. So therefore, alpha must be a meters squared per second type of thing in order for that equation to be correct. So now, when you go off and Google, uh, Google a result that someone's asked you to look for, if the units are not some kind of length squared divided by some kind of time squared, then you know it's not the thing you're looking for. OK, the last example we're going to look at is the case where you've got an equation, and you know the units of all the terms, but they're not really obviously the same. You know, In this case, obviously, meters is the same as meters. What if you've got something a bit different? So the most famous example of this is probably Einstein's famous equation relating energy to mass and speed. OK, so you've got an equation, if you can remember it, E equals mc squared. Energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. So what are the units of energy? Joules equals kilograms, we'll stick to SI units, times the speed of light squared. So we'll put that in brackets, in brackets like that. Are those the same? Is Einstein totally off his rocker? Did he miss something? Well, what we can do to check is use a couple of relations that we are familiar with in order to see if we can reconstruct this unit from these units here. So the two relations that we're going to use, and you should just be able to try and think now, which relationships, which equations do I know that involve these kind of units? OK, so one we know is that force equals mass times acceleration. F equals ma. So F equals ma. What are the units? We've got force is newtons equals kilograms times meters per second squared. You know, again, not obvious, fairly strange in a sense. 
And the other equation that you know is that work done equals force times distance. So work done equals force times distance. We'll have a quick look at the units here as well. So work done is joules, it's just energy. And force times distance, well, that's newtons times meters. OK, now what we can do is perhaps just sub this F directly into this equation here. So we'll get work done equals mass times acceleration times distance, mad. Now let's look at the units. So work done, joules, promising, equals mass, kilograms, times acceleration, meters per second squared, times distance, which is just meters. So now we have an equation that says joules equals kilograms times meters squared per second squared, which is exactly the same as we've got written up here. So you can now rest assured that E equals MC squared is still in business. So I hope with those three examples I've given you, you can see that dimensional analysis is an extremely useful tool, an often very quick way of working out that the thing that you're trying to do is not total foolishness. Uh, and that's mainly what you use it for when you're doing engineering mathematics. Okay.